And today, that's exactly what I bring. Okay, so we have rares, we have epics, we have legendaries, and then we have those anointed versions of said legendaries. The ultimate endgame weapon, in my opinion. Getting that perfect weapon, specially made for your character. I mean, what else can you ask for? And today, guys, I showcase all of what I've accumulated so far since playing Borderlands. Now, only do you have a Zane. I mean, I've got an Amora, I've got a Flak, but they ain't level 50s yet, so I can't really be using these weapons to showcase them to you how effective they are on those characters. Yes, like I said, I've only got I've got to show love to Zane. Zane don't get much love. In the Borderlands community, so I'm I'm a Zane main 100%. But yeah, guys, today I showcase what I've accumulated since the game has been released, and I've got some pretty badass weapons for all kinds of character classes. So let's check them out. And firstly, people, we're going to check out this one right here: Nuclear, the Dictator. This is anointed for Beastmaster, who is Flak, and as we can see, what it does. Minus 20% weapon damage, consumes 2 ammo per shot, while fadeaway is active, gain increased accuracy and handling. Now the weapon itself looks pretty amazing, I mean look at that. That is one beautiful weapon, it's actually really unique as well in the way it shoots. Let me put you on, there you are right there, I've actually got the bipod on, which just makes it where you aim down sight super accurate and powerful. But, you can't move quick, this is the quickest you can move, you can't, well can you jump? No you can't even jump it either. But you can see the way it shoots, it just spreads that fire, but it burns through that ammo, people. Now if we take the bipod off, switch to a rifle, and we can see, this, I, don't think this, I don't think it shoots as many bullets while in that uh, rifle form. It's a monster of a weapon, and for you Beastmasters out there, this would do you good. Okay, so next up, people, we have the nuclear phaser, and this is anointed for the operative, who is Zane. While Sentinel is active, fire rate is increased by 9% and reload speed by 23%. Now the weapon itself is it's not the best weapon in the game, it's okay. And we can see it looks pretty cool though, look at that. I mean it does look pretty cool and it shoots quite quick anyway. Super unique as well in the way it shoots. Now the right skill tree, the right setup, I think this could be absolutely monstrous, I really do. But like I said, don't expect anything amazing for Zane damage output wise unless someone finds that perfect build like I said well I am working on it because I've recently just reset my uh, my skill points so I've got nothing built into nobody so I can't even showcase to you guys how effective this weapon is once you do activate that sentinel but hey ho here we go it's still a, be a decent weapon for you Zanes out there and it's just one to my collection of uh, Zane anointed weapons Next up we have the oozing vigorous Rosen's Fawns. Now this, again, absolutely, it's a, it's a badass weapon when it ain't anointed. And by the way guys, it explains to you guys what anointed it is. If you can look at the top of the actual, uh, the stats of the weapon, you can see the little Borderlands logo. When you got them, it's normally anointed to a individual character. This one isn't though, as you can see, on action skill end. Projectile speed is increased by 100% for a short time. This is a, an amazing weapon, not being anointed. I mean, I've covered this before, and it looks incredible too. I mean, just look at this. Look at the way it shoots as well. It's, it does it deals so much power. And I've seen a few of them uh, flak builds where they're using pistols, and it's so OP. It's so OP, but you, you can't do that with Zane. But either way, this is one for you guys. It's an amazing weapon. And I mean, with the benefits of being anointed, it's going to be even better. Next up, people, we have the Ferocious Lyuda. This is anointed to the operative, which is Zane. While Sentinel is active, gain 50% of damage as bonus cryo damage. Now, you know, guys, this is an absolute beast of a weapon. And because it's anointed to my character, I am going to try and build a class for maximum damage output also looking to increase that magazine size it as it only comes standard with a magazine size of 10 i mean i've got uh, i think i've got a class mod which increases this let's have a look um not that a class mod it is an artifact so plus 40 percent magazine size so that gives me an extra three bullets it's normally at 10 and it shoots 
ridiculously quick. And I mean, I've seen flak builds with this weapon, not anointed to him. And I mean, it's just the way it kills Grave Ward on that Mayhem Freeze on another level, people. That's what I want. That's what I plan to do. That's what I plan to bring you guys for Zane. We need a build like that for us Zane players out there. And you see the way it shoots. I mean, it just burns through its bullets so quick. So you need increased magazine size. I've seen some of these drop with 22 in the mag or 20 in the mag, but it don't have the damage output this one does. This one is a 92. Um... Like I said, uh, Zane, and I think I actually got this. Actually, my friend got this for completing all of Zero's kill assassin missions, I believe. He was sent this via Zero within his social mail, and he was looking. Well, actually, he wasn't looking enough because he plays as a Moles. So he gave it to me because I play as Zane. So yeah, I'm lucky enough. He did them all. <laughs> Great. Okay, so next up, people, we have the Compressing Storm. This is anointed for the Gunner who is Moles. After exiting Iron Bear, kills increase Iron Bear's cooldown rate by 30%. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's got a 250 plus splash damage radius too. Consumes 2 ammo per shot and then 7.9 times weapon zoom. Now, the weapon I've actually used, I've messed about with it on Zen. I mean, obviously, I can't make the most of it being anointed to moles. But it's a weird one. It isn't nowhere near, in my opinion, the best sniper in the game. But what it does do is it charge shoots. It uses uh, 2 or 3 shots. And it kind of like hovers like some orbs that just strike down shock energy on any enemy. I mean, I don't think the initial target does any damage. But there we go, we've got three orbs that will just shock any, uh, two or four orbs there, sorry. That'll shock any target beneath it. I mean, it's okay. It's not amazing. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a must-have. I mean, I find it pretty boring. I mean, like I said, I can't make the most of it being on Zane. But... It takes way too long to charge. The damage these orbs do just isn't enough. So hey ho. Next up, people, we have the Doc, anointed to Zane. Whoa, Digiclone is active. Regenerate 12% of magazine ammo per second. 12% of this is literally not even one bullet because it's only got four in the magazine. So you literally need to wait three seconds to generate one ammo. And when it shoots like this, people, I mean, what's the point of it? I mean, obviously you can extend the magazine size, that and the other, but hey, I mean, like, is it really worth it? I'm not sure. It looks it looks pretty cool, though. I mean, I may try it out once I've built that Zane class. I mean, if you see another video on this, you never know. Because I am going to do videos focused on weapons for certain builds on Zane, because I just, like I said, I don't feel Zane gets enough love within the community. Dude. I mean, everyone loves that high damage output, but there's much more, in my opinion, you can do with Zane. And I also meant to say as well, people, excuse my voice, I've got a blood nose. I've got a cold, it's killing me. So if I pause for a second, or the video cuts, it's because I'm probably sneezing or catching my breath or choking. So yeah. But yeah, guys, I mean, I can't really judge it at the minute. I mean, the projectiles actually stick and then explode. I mean, if I get a big magazine size modifier, I know you can with Zayn with the skill trees and you can get a few artifacts and class items that do increase it but I don't think I'm going to be able to get this over 15 shots if that I'd be lucky but hey we'll see okay so next up we have the double penetrating devastator this one anointed to Zayn after swapping places with your digiclone your weapon is reloaded we can see it's got plus 15 percent weapon fire rate plus 203 splash damage radius consumes two ammo per shot and a 1.5 times weapon zoom i mean it ain't spectacular in design not gonna lie but it shoots amazing look at that this is another weapon like i said i will try out when i do that perfect build optimizing dps this could be one to try it out but yeah the duck pretty cool it's pretty cool Okay, so next up we have the Unending Magnificent. This is anointed to all characters. On action skill end, deal 125% more weapon damage to badass, named, and boss enemies for short time. It's highly effective versus shields, highly effective versus flesh, and it has 127 as standard in its magazine, which is just ridiculous, people. And it's well, I've got 177 with a 40% magazine increase artifact. But like I said, with Zane's skill tree, you can 
massively increase magazine size so i could get this to weigh over 200 and it's it actually shoots pretty crazy so again this could be a great weapon to try out when i've made the most of my build i mean it just doesn't stop firing people what can we switch to here because it's your taser okay i mean I'm not sure how much damage the taser is going to do, but it's a pretty cool addition. But it is all about that magazine size. Oh, it's, it's taser shock, so if you could stun an enemy with that, then just load into it with your solar uh, pistol. That's just amazing. I like it. I like it. Again, will be one I try out when I make the most of my build. Next up, people, we have Ichi the Boring Gun. This is anointed to the Beast Master who is Flak. After using attack command, gain 30% lifesteal for a short time. Plus 26 weapon damage, plus 390 splash damage radius, and a 2.6 times weapon zoom. This is, well, it seems like an absolute monster for you beast masters out there. Let's check out how this thing... Oh, it's one of them ones where it just shoots things along the floor. I mean, I can't see this being that great against someone like Grave Ward. Yeah, I mean, I can't really make the most of a weapon like this because I don't have a flat build, but in all honesty, I'm not too sure this would be that great anyway. I mean, it could be great against, obviously, bosses that stand up on the floor. There's plenty of them in the game, but main endgame bosses like um, the Calypso twins that do hover, or actually the Calypso Tyrene doesn't. It could be good against Tyrene. But her brother is always in the air. The Grave Ward, I mean, is floating about all over the shop. So, yeah. Let's move on. Next up, people, we have a weapon I know is very, very popular indeed. It's got the speed loading Hell Walker. And this is referred to as the Doom Shotgun. This is anointed for all characters. So, my demons, your time has come. Plus 57% weapon damage, plus 10% critical damage, plus 35% reload speed, consumes 2 ammo per shot, highly effective versus flesh and anointed to all characters. An action skill end, weapon status effect damage and chance are increased by 75% for a short time. Now check out how this thing shoots and how quick it is. Like I said, I don't have any speed reload perks on at the minute on any of my artifact class items or load out my skill tree load out but it's still um, and this thing is super super powerful people as you've probably heard so yeah i should have got this given to me by a pal didn't earn this myself but it's definitely what i'm keeping in my collection that is for sure i mean just look at it it's incredible proper doom gun and lastly people we have a shield anointed to no one other than flak after issuing an attack command, gain 8% movement speed for a short time. Stutter Step Big Brother Blaster, what the heck, has a 60% chance to drop a booster that restores 60% shields, a grenade and heavy ammo. Minus 25% recharge delay, plus 10% movement speed while shield is depleted. So this thing makes you quicker, drops boosters that restore shields, grenade and heavy ammo. I mean, what more could you ask for? Shame it isn't for my character though and guys that is it i don't think i have anything else anointed i mean i emptied out my vault i'll quickly check because i was just getting full was, my items were just everything was just full up it was ridiculous i mean I, there's a few things i gotta keep but the one chomp pump i would love an anointed version of because that weapon is incredible the flacker burning flacker itchy flacker any flacker i mean absolutely amazing and that's it i don't really know don't have nothing else in here but yeah guys, that is it. Those are my anointed items collection. Borderlands 3 has a ton of legendary weapons and compared to Borderlands 1 and 2, their spawn rate seems to be a lot higher. So I thought in this video, why not cover 10 awesome legendary weapons that you can find right now in Borderlands 3 Part 1. Starting off the video today, we have a legendary shotgun known as the One Pump Chomp, and I have to say, this is one of the best legendaries I have found so far. The weapon itself is manufactured by Jacobs and has decent stats across the board until you get to its additional effects, and that is where the juice lies. 
These alongside its normal stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level. But the weapon has plus 1160% damage with a plus 28% reload speed, a 35 times weapon zoom and also has another effect that allows a 50% chance to not consume ammo per shot, which means the weapon can sometimes be fired multiple times in succession and because of the sheer power that this gun puts out, it can truly be devastating. To get this weapon, you will want to be on the planet of Promethea and you'll need to go to the Electro City region. You go here very early on in the game so this is a weapon you can pick up early, but once you're in Electro City, you'll want to head over to this location on the map. Just for reference, you can see the spawn point to this location and once you're here, you'll want to head down into the tunnels. Once in the tunnels, there will be a left turn that you can make that will lead you to a puzzle you're supposed to solve. The puzzle involves the TVs in the back of the hallway and four switches you can use to turn the TVs on. The puzzle is solved when all of the TVs come on at the same time and the way we did this is to just keep pressing random switches and we had success doing it this way several times so I'm sure you guys can pretty much do it this way as well and you'll eventually get them all to turn on. Anyway, when all of the TVs turn on, an enemy known as One Punch will come out of the doorway, and this is the guy who can drop the One Pump Chomp. Make sure to be careful though, his name is One Punch, and he is no joke. If he hits you once, you are guaranteed to go down, so make sure that you keep your distance, and kill him as fast as you can. This took us a few tries to get, so if you don't get it on your first try, simply reload your game and try again. Next up we have the legendary Skeksel. Now the Skeksel is a children of the vault weapon that shoots a burst of 7 rounds per shot that also shoots 3 elemental projectiles and because of this and also its very good fire rate, this gun is a literal mount machine and one of the better legendaries I managed to obtain. You can get this gun in various different elements and the prefix that I ended up getting was the stabby nasty variant with incendiary as the elemental type. To get this weapon, you'll need to go to the Ascension Bluff region of Pandora. Luckily enough, you start the game on Pandora and can get this weapon very early on. Anyway, once you're in Ascension Bluff, you want to make your way to this location on the map. It's here where you will find one of Sir Hamalak's legendary hunt crew challenges and the enemy known as Skrak will spawn. This is the enemy that has a chance to drop the weapon. It took me a few times to farm this guy but luckily he's very easy to farm as the spawn location for this region is quite close to the location. Overall the weapon is great and definitely one that you guys will want to pick up. One of the things I love about Borderlands is there's never a shortage of awesome easter eggs and it really shows with this next weapon known as the Redundant Savvy Feebert. The weapon is a Hyperion legendary shotgun that drops from a rare enemy spawn known as Wick and Warty, which is clearly a reference to the TV show Rick and Morty. So much so that the enemies even look and sound similar to Rick and Morty and being a huge fan of the show, it's really awesome to see this easter egg in the game. Anyway, to get this weapon, you want to go to the Electra City region of Promethea. Once here, you want to head over to this location on the map, and it's here where Wick and Warty has a chance to spawn. Now obviously, if they don't spawn here, simply reload the game and head back and hopefully you'll eventually get them to spawn, but then you'll have to fight them. Warty is very easy to kill and doesn't have much health, but Wick on the other hand will keep teleporting, so you will have to hunt him down a little bit. Anyway, once you have killed Wick, he has a chance to drop the redundant Savvy Feebert. The weapon itself is actually pretty decent. It has decent stats across the board with additional effects of boosted weapon damage, critical hit damage, weapon shield capacity, and weapon accuracy. And also, because it's Hyperion, it has a shield on the gun when aiming down sights that can reflect bullets when hit. Overall, it's a decent legendary weapon and definitely one for you collectors out there. For the next weapon on this list, we have the Shocking 9 Volt. This weapon is a legendary dial pistol that always comes with the shock elemental effect and will always have a damage modifier of times 3 but the rest of its stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level. What makes this weapon unique though is the burst pattern. It shoots 6 bullets for the price of 3 and shoots them in a V shape. Because of this it makes it a very powerful weapon to use. 
To get this weapon, you'll want to go to the Meridian Complex in Promethea and head over to this location. It's here where you can get a quest known as Kill Killer Vault. Now because I already accepted it when I wasn't recording, it's not here for me anymore. But go here and the quest should be available from the board on the pillar. Anyway, you'll want to make your way through this quest line because at the very end of this, you get to fight a boss known as Killer Vault. And it's here where the Shocking 9 Vault has a chance to spawn. It took us about 3 tries to get this weapon and just to mention, you do have to complete the quest before you can continue farming this guy. Overall, the weapon is very powerful and has additional effects of boosted critical hit damage and also has a 2.2 and 5 times weapon zoom. Yet another early game legendary weapon you can obtain is known as the Mind Killer. The Mind Killer is a legendary Maliwan shotgun that drops from the boss fight known as Mouthpiece. And of course, Mouthpiece is one of the first main boss fights you will come across, so it will be very easy for you to farm this. The weapon itself has a flavor text that states, I must not fear. Fear is the Mind Killer, and also boasts additional effects of boosted weapon damage and weapon charge speed. The gun also shoots out a sound blast of 9 pellets per shot, similar to that of Mouthpiece himself, and when zoomed in, it packs those 9 bullets into a tighter circle for better accuracy. As far as legendary weapons go, it's pretty decent and definitely a great weapon to pick up early game. Next up, we have a Maliwan SMG known as the Wester Gun. The Wester Gun can switch between two elemental types. The variants that I got in this was the Shock and Radiation elements, but for you, this may be different. As far as SMGs go, this is actually pretty damn powerful. It has a decent fire rate and has additional effects of boosted splash damage radius and a 3.3 times weapon zoom. And of course, most of the default stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level. The flavor text for this weapon is, I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't, which is a reference to the movie Home Alone. We are looking for a young man. All right, I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't. To get this weapon, you'll need to have visited the planet of Athena, and also got the character known as Ava on board Sanctuary 3. This happens naturally through the main story, but once you do have Ava on board Sanctuary, you can then get a side quest from her known as Invasion of Privacy, and it's at the end of this quest where you will come across an enemy known as Beans. Beans is the guy who has a chance to drop the legendary Wester gun. Now again, if you kill him and you don't get the weapon, you do need to complete the quest before you can continue to farm for this. And just for reference, here is the location of where he will spawn on Athena's in comparison to your spawn location. Returning from previous Borderlands games, we have the legendary Lyuda and TK Baja's wave gun. I managed to get both of these from a boss fight known as Captain Traunt that you will come across during the main quest line on the planet of Athena. Once you complete the main quest here, he will then become farmable and there's a spawn point just above where you fight him, so he's very easy to farm. Again, for me, the first legendary he dropped was the Lyuda, which is a fan favorite weapon from Borderlands 2 and is extremely powerful. The weapon itself is a Vladov sniper that has the flavor text Mankiller, which has the unique ability that allows it to shoot one projectile that splits into three projectiles on a horizontal plane. And because of the variant I ended up getting, which was the annexed Vicious Lyuda, it gave the weapon a times two modifier, which allowed me to shoot six projectiles for the price of two bullets, making this gun one of the most powerful weapons I currently have. Like seriously, this gun is amazing. It also has additional effects of boosted critical hit damage, weapon accuracy and fire rate, consumes two ammo per shot, and also has a 9.9 times weapon zoom. In addition to this, when farming him, I also got TK Baja's Shockwave, which is a legendary Jacob shotgun that does shock elemental damage. The flavor text for this one is Ride the Wave Dude, which offers the unique ability to fire blue projectiles in a horizontal line 
that also oscillate up and down and ricochet off walls. The weapon also offers boosted critical hit damage, weapon accuracy and fire rate. Both of these weapons are great, but one thing that I am uncertain of is whether or not Captain Traunt is guaranteed to drop these specific weapons, or if he just drops random legendaries. Either way, he is very easy to farm and has pretty good drop rates, so you're bound to get some cool legendaries from him. Yet again, we have multiple legendaries in one location. This time, it's the Handsome Jackhammer, and two legendary grenade mods known as the Quasar, and Trooper's Organ. All of these drop for me on the planet of Athenus. If you head over to this location on the map, you will come across one of Sir Hamelot's legendary hunt crew challenges that task you to kill a creature known as the Trooper Cabrach. Once killed, he has a chance to drop some legendary items. His main one is the grenade mod known as Trooper's Organ, which is a homing grenade that essentially sucks the life out of your enemies with its life drain effect. The second one I got was the legendary Quasar Grenade mod, which is a returning grenade from Borderlands 2, and yet another homing grenade that sticks to the target and does continuous shock damage. And then the third drop I got was the Handsome Jackhammer. The Handsome Jackhammer is manufactured by Hyperion, and as many of you will know, this means that it has that pop-out shield that activates when aiming down sights. The weapon also has two special effects. The first is that when thrown, it bounces around like a bouncing Betty while also shooting and doing explosive damage each time it hits the ground. And the second special effect is the fact that the gun will randomly at times speak to you in Handsome Jack's voice, which is really cool. Overall, as far as SMGs go, it's pretty decent, and again, I'm uncertain if this weapon in particular is a guaranteed drop from the Trooper Cabrach, but either way, he's easy to farm, offers random legendary weapons, and also has the main grenade mod drop of the Trooper's Organ. Now this is one of the weirder guns in Borderlands 3, and it's known as the Predatory Lending. It's manufactured by Hyperion and has the flavor text, bullets are cheap, but not that cheap, which gives it the unique ability to quite literally cost money to shoot each shot. That's right, every time you shoot a bullet, it costs one dollar, which is absolutely insane and more of a collector's item as opposed to something you would use normally. To get this gun, you'll need to be in the drought region on the planet of Pandora. If you head over to this location on the map, you'll come across another one of Sir Hamelok's legendary hunt crew challenges, and in this case, it will task you to kill a creature known as the Lavender Crawley, and it's here where this legendary weapon has a chance to spawn. Again, the weapon is Hyperion, which means that it does come with that pop-out shield when aiming down sights, and also offers additional effects of boosted weapon damage, critical hit damage and weapon shield capacity. But all of that combined just isn't worth using the gun for the fact that it costs money to use. Either way, it's a collector's item and a legendary weapon that some of you guys out there may want to obtain. And for the final few legendaries of the video, we have the Maliwan Shredder Fire and the TDR Smart Gun XXL. Both of these spawn from Gigamind, which is a boss fight during the main quest line on the planet of Promethea, so this is something that you will naturally come across. However, if you do want to continue farming Gigamind, again, you do have to complete the main quest line. And then from there, you can simply head over to this location on the map where he spawns and start farming him. His main legendary weapon drop is the Smart Gun Double XL, which when reloaded and thrown, turns into a brain turret on the ground that also shoots at enemies, which again, is absolutely insane. The gun also features an alien weapon barrel that gives the weapon a 100% increase in damage, making this a very viable and gimmicky legendary to use. The next weapon I got from here was the Shredder Fire, and I have to say, this thing is an absolute melt machine. The flavor text for the weapon is Speed Kills, which offers the unique ability of a greatly decreased spore time, extremely high firing speed and very large capacity and that combined with its already high fire rate of 16.98 makes this weapon very very powerful. The version I ended up getting was corrosive but it is possible to get different elemental types and again this one for me was one of the more powerful legendaries listed in this video. 
And that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. And if you're into this kind of content, why not subscribe? I'll be doing a ton more Borderlands 3 top 10 videos. And this is just the beginning of what's to come. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. What's going on guys? Killer Sticks back with another Borderlands 3 legendary item guide for you guys. And this time we're taking a look at the Skek Seal, which is a pistol manufactured by the Children of the Vault. The version I've got is called the Chemic Bruzen Skek Seal, but that can change depending on the parts that this gun spawns with. The red text reads, Get Back Spithead, which is a quote from the Dark Crystal. Get Back Spithead! The gun's name itself seems to be derived from the Skeksis, which are vulture-looking bird-beast things from the Dark Crystal. They're gross, and they gave me nightmares as a kid, so... With Borderlands 3 being so new, I don't really yet know what this prefix is, what it does, and what prefix you should shoot for when you farm for this thing, but I can tell you that the one that I got was killing armored targets with ease, and even made short work of fleshy targets too, even though they were 5 levels higher than the gun was. The level 8 stats on this gun are 16 damage, 64% accuracy, 58% handling, 3 second repair time, which is essentially the children of the vault's way of reloading your weapon. In the case of this gun, when it overheats, you spray it with a water gun, which is hilariously awesome in my opinion. 14.55 fire rate per second and 64 shots to break, which again is specific to the children of the vault weapons. This just means that after 64 shots, you're going to spend 3 seconds repairing the gun. That's the long and short of that. Additional stats are 26% weapon damage, 10% critical hit damage, and 15% weapon fire rate. So what does this gun do? It melts on level and even slightly higher level than you enemies with ease. It can actually spawn in multiple elements for what that's worth as well. It fires a burst of bullets with a slight delay between bursts, slowing the time to kill marginally, but it's not really that noticeable. So how do you get this gun? The Skeksil is a rare drop from Scrack in Ascension Bluff. You can actually encounter this enemy on your first time through the game and they do spawn 100% of the time. From the spawn point you want to follow the route that I take to get to this enemy. It's a fast run and each attempt should take you less than a minute give or take depending on the gear that you're using. Now like Lavender Crawley this one is one of the Hammerlock big game hunt enemies which is a side challenge in many of the areas of this game. It only took me about 8 tries to get this specific drop, so obviously this is a guess, but I would say it's likely about a 10% drop rate. Scrack flies around a lot and is a pain in the butt to kill with slow projectile weapons, so be sure that you take something that will work well here. If you have something that's a fire weapon with high fire rate, you should be absolutely solid on this kill. So, is this gun worth getting? Yeah, absolutely. On normal mode and right near the beginning of the game, this weapon can be a massive help to you. Is it the best gun in the game? Nah, not by a long shot, but it's easily worth spending an extra 15 to 30 minutes to farm for one of these. And if you can get a fire one early on, then you're going to be set for most of the enemies that you're going to encounter for the next few levels. So there you have it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at the Skeksil. If you uh, enjoyed this video, please take a second to hit that like button, hit subscribe for more, tap that bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all.